morning, students. My name is uh, Wayne Flanagan. And I am your lecturer for TMS 3709 for 2023. I have been in the classroom for many a year. So I bring with me a lot of experience. In the latter part of my teaching at the school where I was, I was responsible for the students that came to do practice teaching. And um, uh, what I saw during those sessions was not always what I would say I admire. And I hope we can uh, do it differently. I'm going to switch off the camera now, and then I'm just going to speak through the mic. So the reason why you are doing this course is that you want to become a, a teacher, and by that I mean a, a good teacher, whatever that might mean. These days it might mean um, you would want to lead learners to problem solve and to think critically. The days are over where we expected learners just to know the facts and learn things off by heart. The demands of the times that we live in demand that learners must be able to work things out for themselves. I would also I think that your learning wouldn't stop after this, after qualifying as a teacher, and that you would want to study further, go deeper into the subject, even into other areas of education, and maybe find yourself in academia one day. So that, that is our aims, to become good teachers and also later on to become academics, hopefully. Now I want to talk about the study material that we will be using. As you know, we will be doing online learning and our modules you will find here on this page. We have there learning unit one, economics, uh, the CAPS curriculum and the economics teacher. That will be learning unit one. Learning unit two would be the theories and methods for, for the teaching and learning of economics. Learning unit three will be about planning, designing, and presenting of a CAPS economics lesson. Learning four will be about assessment. And learning unit five will be about classroom management in the different in the diverse South African classroom. Now we will come back and talk about these learning units in detail later on. Right, I want us to look at the learning page, at the uh, landing page, and how we work through the module. Uh, it starts off with the welcome. What do, to which some of you have responded already. Then the next step was the introductions and expectations. If uh, some of you have introduced yourself and uh, you have expressed your expectations. At this stage, I just want to tell you that I've noticed some of you speak that you want to learn about the subject itself, the content of the subject. Remember, uh, students, you are being taught here how to become a teacher, and the assumption is that you already know the content. So we are not going to delve into the content itself. We are going to look at the pedagogical issues that's involved in becoming a teacher. So if, if, if you have content issues, you will need to go to your, 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 your notes or to your peers 
and you will have to work together and uh, work things out. Then we have the announcements. We had uh, announcement one. There was the welcome again and getting started. Then we have the online etiquette. The online etiquette, what is important here is this guidelines on how to use the modules online, guidelines on etiquette. If you if you press on there, you will you will be taken there to to that, the etiquette, and you can read through through that. Announcement three, the general questions about three TMS 3709. Now, yeah, I say I've created forum three for general questions about TMS 3709. Please use this forum to raise any questions not addressed in the FAQs. And if you press on there, this is a very important part of the of the work. FAP, FAQs. You must go through this in 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 detail. Not so much question one. You can read through it. You must read through question two. Question two is important, is um, material, how do I access URL letter 101? You can access it here and on the home page. There you have page one and then you have page two. Who should I contact if I have academic queries? That will be myself, and that is my office number, and you can call me on that number. You can't get hold of me. There is our secretary, Ms. Mrs. Lewis, and you can find her at that address. If you have any queries not relating to 3MS 709, please, guys, I am not working in administration, so I would not know how to answer you, so you need to go look there. Where can you find it and the, the relevant person that you're looking for? Then what services do the library offer? There you can see the services that's being offered by the library, lending service, literature service, services, research support and technology services. We will make use of a recommended book teaching EMS in the senior primary phase. Although we say teaching EMS, you can just replace wherever you see EMS. You can replace it with the word economics because it is exactly the same. And this book you will need from the library. Then the next page is what guidelines can I follow? For planning my studies, this is very important because we are we work within specific time frames. So time is important for a distance education student. Must be in control of your time and manage it effectively. You can read further on. Very important. I would like to encourage you not to fall behind in your planning. Work regularly and consistently. Make sure that you understand the work as you go. Do not give up on difficult work. Rather, ask for help as soon as possible. Now, the introduction. This is what we do now. Work through the module site to familiarize yourself with the content and activities. We've done this one. We participated in Forum 1. I must mention that only about 10 learners out of 235 have registered, have participated here. Should you wish to follow the forum study groups, participate in forum too. 
and then we come to the units that we will do. Now the first unit is about economics, the CAPS policy and the economics teacher. When we wrote this module, we thought that we could fit in a team session, but uh, uh, we are still attending training sessions on how to conduct the team sessions ourselves. Now in this module, we will we will do three activities. We will do forum four, forum five, and forum six. The forums are questions or activities on learning unit one. We can look at the forums later on. Tomorrow evening, I want us to start. From tomorrow, I want us to start to look at Forum 4. And we will share answers on that uh, in that specific site. And then we will have to submit Assessment 1, which will be a quiz on the 30th of March. Now, currently on your site, you will read as if the course is already available, but the course will only be available two or three days before you, you write it. And the first course will not only consist of, of um, learning units one work, but also learning unit two. Now, what is Learning Unit 2 about? It's about the theories and approaches for teaching FET economics. Now, the theories, the theories that we are going to look at is behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. And we will find that in the recommended textbook, which we must get from the library. And in that learning unit, we also have two forums for forum seven and forum eight. And then you can see there on the 30th of March, that is the end of next month, we must then submit the quiz. The quiz is for both learning unit one and learning unit two. 50% learning unit one, 50% learning unit two. So I would advise you to go through your learning units uh, now already, read through it with insight and participate in the forums. And it, it is 100 marks. It is the quiz will be for 100 marks, 50 marks for each. Then a month later, you will be doing assessment two, which will be a written essay assessment. And this assessment will be coming from both learning unit two for 35 marks and learning unit three for 15 marks. So 35 and 15 will give us 50 marks. And we are working with continuous assessment. But in other words, you are being assessed continuously throughout the year, so there won't be any examination for this module. So be forewarned. Make sure that you score uh, good marks because there won't, during the assessments, because there won't be an examination. Then from after the 26th of April to the 14th of July, we will have the planning, the design and presenting of lesson plans in the FET classroom, including lesson aids that include the use of information and communication technology. We hope by that time we will be having a Teams session and then our activities will be forums. 
forum 9 and forum 10 that will be on this work. And then we will do assessment 3. Which will be another quiz on the 1st of June. For 100 marks again. So this assessment 3 will only come from learning unit. The next learning unit will be from the 2nd of June to the 3rd of July. And this unit will be dealing with assessments. We need to determine whether our learners grasp the work that we've taught them. And we know that we have in schools, we have formative and summative assessments. Formative assessments is what we do during the year. And summative assessment is the exams that the learners write. Remember I said that we will only do, in a sense, the formative part because we will be doing continuous assessment. We will only be doing assessments during the year and we won't be writing an exam. Then from, that must be the 4th of July to the 15th of August. I think that there's a stake here. That must be learning unit five. Sound classroom management practices and teaching for diversity in the FET classroom. We know that we work in very diverse classrooms these days, not only from among our own people of South Africa, but we have people from all over Africa and from the world coming to South Africa. And we cannot give up on those people, on those learners if they do not understand something. We must, we must take them along with us. And that is what we will be looking at in this module. And there we also have uh, two forums, forum 12 and forum 13. And then we have a written assessment on assessment five. We also have a written assessment on, on, uh, ass on the topic of assessment. I forgot to mention that. And then we have assessment six, which, which is a contingency assessment, which will be made up of learning units one to learning unit five. I must say at this stage that assessment one to assessment five is compulsory. Assessment one to assessment five is compulsory. If for one or the other reason you have left out an assessment, you may do the assessment six. That is why assessment six is called the contingency assessment. But you must have five assessments to qualify for a complete mark. Otherwise, your assessments will be incomplete. Must I complete any practical work for this module? No, you do not have to do any practical work for TMS 3709. However, TMS 3709 involves practical work during your teaching practice modules for which you are registered. And I hope if you do teaching practice sessions here in Pretoria, I would find time to come and sit in and listen. Although these days, UNISA, because of the online system, we also track our, our practical students, learners, through online purposes. How will I be assessed? This is very important. There are six continuous activities of which you must complete five for successfully completing this module. Very important. There are six 
of which you must complete five for successfully completing this module. There are two multiple choice assessments, which are quizzes that are compulsory. And remember for the quizzes, you, you don't get it long in advance, uh, two or three days in advance. However, you are encouraged to complete all the assessment tasks. The highest scores of five assessment tasks will then be captured for your final grade. So, Here's a summary of our assessments. Here's the type. There's the learning units where it's coming from. The due date when it is due and the weighting of the assessments. Now assessment one. It's a course and it is compulsory like every other assessment that comes from learning units one and two. That is why I say you must be busy already now with one and learning unit two to prepare yourself for the course of the 30th of March 2023. And the weighting thereof is 20%. Assessment two is a written task, which is compulsory. And that comes from unit two and three. Unit two is 30, 35 of the 15, 50 marks. And unit three is 15 of the 50 marks. That gives us 50. The due date for that is the 26th of April. And the weighting is also 20%. Then assessment three will be a quiz, which is comp will be compulsory as well. And that comes from learning unit three. And the due date for that is the 1st of June 2023 and 20%. It counts. Assessment four is a written task, which is compulsory. It comes from learning unit four on assessments, and this will be done on the 3rd of July, 2023, and it also counts 20%. Assessment five is a written task. It comes from learning unit five, that is on classroom management and diversity, and this must be ended in on the 15th of August and it counts 20%. Then assessment six, if you've done assessment one to assessment five, then you do not have to do assessment six. Assessment six is for those people that left out one of the assessments. You can only leave out one assessment to qualify for assessment six. And that is a written task, call it a, a contingency, and it will consist of modules one to five. In other words, you must now go back to one, two, three, and then four and five. And this will be done on the 30th of September for 20%. So for since five assessments qualify for our continuous assessment, five times 20 gives us a 100%. Best of the five assessment gives us 100%. Note all assessments are compulsory number one to five. If you did not complete and submit the required one to five assessment, then you are compelled to complete and submit assessment six before or on the due date of 30 September. If not, your final mark will be incomplete. In other words, if you have four assessments, it will you will have an incomplete mark. And don't come and cry then and come up with all the excuses of why you didn't do it. That is why we go through this at the beginning of the year so that you know what you let yourself in for. No late submissions will be assessed. I encourage you to attend this synchronous sessions via Teams and participate in the forums. This will uh, help to clarify uncertainties you may have about TMS 3709. How do I uh, submit my assessment task? Must admit, uh, uh, submit your assessment task electronically via my UNISA. All right, once you've logged in, 
select the module for which you are submitting the assessment task, select the relevant task and follow the instructions. You can read through that and the following uh, some general guidelines. Courses are completed online before uh, submitting your assessment task. Make sure that you have name and save the assessment task correctly. That is especially for assessments that, that are not courses, courses. Make sure that you upload the correct version and not a blank or incomplete document or a assessment from another module. Save your assessment task in PDF format before you upload it. Make sure you receive a confirmation note that your assessment task has been uploaded successfully. Will I write an exam for this module? Now there will be no examination for this module. The six assessment tasks will make up 100% of your final mark as explained above. The six, which is actually five. Right, now this is the most important parts of what I wanted to talk to you about. The assessment and what we've done on the previous page. What are we going to cover during the year? Economics, CAPS policy and the economics teacher. I now want us to go look at the learning units itself. Before we come to the learning units, here we have announcements that we've gone through already. We have additional resources. This is the outcomes and assessment criteria. This is just the outcome of the unit and the access assessment criteria for all five of them. <clears throat> then there's some student information. This is on the Poppy Act. For example, can a parent, a friend, sibling, relative, spouse, a SRC member request personal information on my behalf? Personal information which include academic records, examination timetable, examination results, NSF outcomes, acknowledgement of debt, graduate, etc. will not be given to any of the third parties. You can go read through this because we know that the Poppy Act is very important in South Africa. <clears throat> then, students to use their My Life accounts. All students have been notified that they must use their My Life email account to con communicate with the university. This is also stipulated in the rules for students. Very important, members of staff are requested to only address those students' inquiry that are sent from my life email account. If you receive an inquiry from a private email account, please advise the student to resubmit the inquiry from their my life email account. Then you, that is me, may only communicate with a student using a private email address under the following circumstances. New applicants who are inquiring about information for the purposes of applying for admission, etc. You can read through that. Then here's an example of a lesson plan, which we will only get to when we come to module three. Right. Then this is a problem. I must still find out from ICT what is a long year. You don't have to bother about this at this stage. Mm. Then FAQs. 
FAQs, we've already talked about it. We've just gone through it. You can find it on somewhere else as well. This is the four pages that we've gone through. Now we come to our modules itself. There you can see we have assessments. One, two, three, four, five. Assessment one is hidden <coughs> from the students. We are busy with assessment for the other assessment and it will soon be uploaded, especially assessment two, four, and five. <coughs> Assessment three, since it is also a, a course, will also be done. Then the learning unit. What does the learning unit consist of? Is the introduction, outcome, and assessment criteria. Now, if you read through this, for example, here you have this learning unit introduces the national curriculum and policy statement, which is CAPS. Then CAPS is given to you in the form of a link. So you just click on it. And there you have your CAPS document. And so you go on. At minimum requirements, if you also click on it, it will open up. If you need to open it up, professional state intendants of the South African Council of Educators, you can see that is in grey. Then also just click on it. And it will give you information about SAIS, South African Council of Educators. Then you have the content, economics as a school subject and its implications. Some of the main issues in economics are, etc. Then the four main topics, macroeconomics, microeconomics, economic pursuits, and contemporary economic issues. Once again, they tell you where you can find it in caps. And if you if you uh, press on the link, it will take you to the caps document. And you go through whatever is given there. If something is not in the form of a link, then it, it is in text form and you need to go through it. All right, then economics as a school subject and its explicit aims. Once again, it is text. It is text more than links. And the responsibilities of the economics teacher in the classroom. In the classroom, it's admin tasks, facilitation tasks, teaching tasks, etc. All right. Do you have the skills to teach the subject? You can see it's more test, text, than links. The links will follow more in the other modules. I will show you now. For example, if we go to learning unit two, it's also there's the income, introductions and assessment criteria, the theoretical foundations of teaching, 
FET economics. Here we have some decks. And very important, that is why you must try and get a hold of the recommended textbook. Yeah, study the ebook of Van Veik, Dose Rice, Teaching Economic Sciences, the learner centered approach. 2016 from page 24 to 31 to gain a full understanding of the behaviorist topics. Cognitivism is on page 31 to 37, and constructivism is on pages 38 to 47 for more detailed information. Pay attention to the implications. Applications is normally the advantages and disadvantages, the strengths and the weakness of each theory. Remember, this is part of assessment one, the course, and it is part of assessment two, the written essay. And teaching approaches to the teaching of Economics, I think this is more text. Principles to consider when choosing approaches and methods for teaching economics. This is also text. There's an exercise there where you must say which a principle applies and the reason for saying so. And teacher-centered approach. This is more text. You need to go through it. Then the learner centered approach to the teaching of FET economics. According to this approach, the learner is at the center and teachers must support learners to discover new content skills and values for me. The following learner-centered approaches are briefly discussed as addressed in, and you can see yeah, it's in gray again. In other words, it's a link. So if you press on it, it gives you the link as to approaches to teaching EMS, the learner-centered approach. So then you go Through the link approaches to teaching EMS, the learner centered approach. And there you will find all of them. What is a learner centered approach? The different types, small group work method, cooperative learning techniques. So you can't say in a, if you get this in one of your assessments, but it is not in the traditional notes. Traditional notes is, 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 is what we have okay, in the beginning. It is a link, so it is here. Let us quickly just look at a size assessment. Not assessment five. Learning unit five. We have 
introductions, outcomes and assessment criteria, the structure of basic classroom management. Here we have basic classroom management extends beyond the teacher managing misbehavior through discipline and control. Student teachers need to be aware of this narrow, you know, to get it, autocratic approach to the classroom management. I want you to listen and watch the video and watch the following link. So not all links are in, in text. It is also in video form. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is the, the types of information that you will find in your learning units. If there's anything that is not clear, I will I will write about it in the announcements. So you need to follow your your your, your site all the time. Or if you find something is not clear, please make contact with me so that we can clear it up immediately. So, students, this is what I wanted to do today. I just wanted to go through the to the site or what we also call the landing page. See what is in there and how you need to work from there. Please, I ask of you that you start immediately. I hope that you are already busy with learning unit one, because it will count 50% of our course, your first course. And then try to stick to the dates that I've given you, because then you must go over to Learning Unit 2, that will also form part of the course, which is the, at the end of next month. So we, we don't really have much time. I, I wish you well, and I hope that we can work well together. I will hope that I will be always available to assist. I will do my best to get back to you within 24 hours, if not within 24 hours, 36 hours, that is three days. But from my side, I will try and give you as much assistance as possible. Um, I hope that you will contribute to the forums this evening, forum six, which is in learning unit one. Oh, it's forum four, implicit aims of economics as a school subject. Reading and using sections 1.1 and 1.2 of this module's paragraph. Read through the implicit aims of economics as a school subject on page five to seven to participate in this forum. Also use the CAPS document, and there you can see that you can open the CAPS document and then respond to the following questions. Briefly discuss the aim of the, that specific aim, the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. What does it mean economics? Elaborate on the different ways economic information can be obtained. Guidelines for participating, prepare your response offline and keep their record. Use an academic writing style for citing and referencing sources. Reply to at least two of your fellow students' responses. 
I am looking forward to your contributions. Right, I will not necessarily mark your 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 the work that you've done in the forum, but I will respond to some of it. So that is that is uh, how we will go about tackling this module this year. Once again, I, I wish you all the best. And I wish that you that you will be successful and that you will become also a successful teacher. Move through the ranks of the school, then come do further studies so that you can eventually become an academic. In this particular subject. So students, I wish you well and all of the best. Thank you.